This video was inspired by a previous video titled Problems with Uneven Ground and Straight Fences. And I had quite a few responses for people asking for a few ideas on how they could fill these areas in. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I would suggest would be to just simply block it off with a horizontal board. This could be a 1x6, a 1x8, something like that. You could use 2 by materials. If you have a larger gap, maybe a 2 by 10 And of course, you can always put something on the inside and screw it to the fencing. Uh, and I have my screws sticking out just to show you that they are screws. Your screws will go all the way in. And of course, you could always use a large beam. Now, the original picture I took, um, this was a neighbor, and they used railroad ties. They just simply put some railroad ties in there. And if the gap isn't too big, maybe you could simply go down to your local home improvement center and pick up some bricks and fill the area with them. Another idea might be rotating the bricks to a different angle. Another thing you can do if you're looking for some extra support, maybe your bricks are falling over, you might need to actually bury them in the ground. Let's also try not to rule out the fact that you might end up with a gap between the bottom of your fencing and the barrier because you needed to bury it in the ground. And if you can live with a one inch or a two inch gap, then something like this still might work. And if that isn't going to work, you might want to try using some larger materials like concrete blocks. They're going to be a little more stable, a little wider, and of course probably cost a little more money. Now the only problem with doing something like this is that the wood post won't be protected if you backfill it. But that problem can easily be solved by notching the block around the post Give you an idea what the block might look like there. And of course, let's backfill it with some soil. Now, if you're looking for some additional support because these blocks might move, if you backfill this with soil, it can put enough pressure on this to move these blocks. And if that's the case, you might want to drive some stakes into the ground to prevent them from moving. Just kind of give you an idea what the stake would look like without the block in the way. And of course, it will be, since it's a wider block, your block's probably going to be six or eight inches. This might be four inches. You'll, you should have plenty of room to drive a stake in there. And I would use a two by four. I wouldn't use a one by four for something like this. My next suggestion would be to use a piece of lumber. And of course, that could be pressure treated lumber. And of course, if the gap is too large, you might need to put another board on top of the bottom board like this. I just want to warn you that if you're just simply filling the area, you're trying to prevent something from coming in or out or whatever your reasons are for blocking the gap, that's going to be fine. However, it might not be if you're going to backfill this and add additional soil to it to where you're getting above eight inches for example if you backfill this with 12 inches of soil it could put enough pressure on these fence posts to cause the fence to lean away from the soil and uh, if there's enough pressure put on the fence it can actually force the fence to collapse and fall over another thing you could do would be to add some additional posts as uh, structural supports and you could always put them in concrete or bury them in the ground. I will leave that up to you. But this will definitely take some pressure off of the fence. Add your boards, fill your soil. And of course this is what it looks like on the other side. Again, this right here, you might be able to do this on this side. You can't backfill this side without protecting the wood post. And of course, you don't want to put the filler boards on the other side of the fence because you are going to lose all of the protection for the wood post. Now, remember, the problem with filling this area, someone builds a fence, you got to fill the area. Hey, I'm just going to fill it with dirt. The problem with filling it with dirt is that now the wood fence is going to be exposed to the soil. When this gets wet, 
you're going to accelerate the process of rotting the wood and of course the fence post will eventually need to be replaced. Another thing you could do would be to add some 2x4 stakes and these would need to be pressure treated lumber, ground rated obviously, but again if you're going to use regular wood um, you could end up replacing them in the future. Regular wood, I mean non-pressure treated lumber. And this here you're simply going to drive some stakes down into the ground um, level, drive them down into the ground, but it's going to be an inch and a half away from the fence. So the stakes are basically going to, you can screw them into the bottom rail of the fence, but there will actually be a gap here. This is going to prevent any moisture from transferring from these materials to the wood post. And of course this might be an excellent idea for someone who wants to separate the soil if you're going to backfill it from the fence. Now for those of you looking to fill both sides of the fence with soil, if you're going to do that, all you need to do is protect the wood post. And of course that can be done by adding an additional concrete footing over the other one. The only thing I don't like about this idea is that there could be a gap between the top of the lower footing and the bottom of the upper footing. And any gap that will allow moisture to get in here could actually lead to um, faster decomposition of the wood fence posts and you would be replacing it. So this is one suggestion. Another one would be to wrap it with some type of waterproofing membrane. And then of course feel free to backfill both sides of the fence. And of course it will be nice if your waterproofing membrane or concrete footing extends at least an inch above the finished um, grade of soil, top of the soil. And that is it. I'm out of suggestions. If you have any, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And just remember, your main goal for dealing with a problem like this will be to protect the wood fence post from being exposed to too much soil.